I'm very excited to introduce our new hero, the Samsung Galaxy Note. This is a vision only Samsung can deliver because only Samsung offers products and services that touch everything people do. It is my great pleasure to present the all new Hey, what's up guys? Adam Lobo here and you're watching Adam Lobo TV. Now let's take a walk down the Galaxy Lane and take a look at all the devices that Samsung has given us through the Galaxy Note line. The Galaxy Note was ahead of its time with a 5.3 inch display and don't forget in 2011, the iPhone had a screen size of only 3.5 inch and a typical Android devices was sporting a 4 or 4.5 inch display. Now, not only was the display something really futuristic, but it also had a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which is starting to be quite popular in 2019. Now running the device, we do have the dual core Exynos 4210 processor with 1 gig of RAM and the device had an 8 megapixel wide angle lens. Now this was also the time when Samsung was using the Android 2.3 gingerbread along with the TouchWiz as their Android skin which was known to be a bit slow and included lots of bloatware. But of course, through the S Pen, there came the useful S Memo app which allows the user to scribble notes on it using the S Pen. Then came the refreshed Galaxy Note 2. Now, a year after the successful launch of the Galaxy Note, Samsung releases the refresh of the device, this time going even further with an even bigger screen size. And the Galaxy Note 2 comes with a 5.5 inch screen and a new and improved S Pen. Now the redesign of the S Pen helps silence the critics with much better accuracy and also pressure sensitivity and a more ergonomic design. And along that comes with the updated internals like the new quad-core processor and 2 gigs of RAM. And what's great is that Samsung has also made some pretty decent changes to the software, launching the Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, which again with the touch is present. The S Pen also learned a new trick with the new Wacom digitizer technology included with the device where the S Pen gained the AirView support. Now this allows the screen to react when the pen is brought close to the screen and this allowed for a small little pop-up window to preview messages and some other extra functionalities. So most of the improvements of the Galaxy Note 2 came from the software improvements and the camera was left unchanged with the device still spotting an 8 megapixel shooter like its predecessor. Now the Galaxy Note 3 was launched in September 2013 and this device made some unique changes to the exterior of the device. Samsung decided to also include a plastic back which kind of looked like leather and this was a really nice addition which truly made the device stand out. But Samsung also introduced the USB 3.0 to the device in a very unique way where they used a USB 3.0 cable to charge the device and this was when all the other devices used micro USB. Now internally, the Galaxy Note 3 spotted two different variants for different markets. The Qualcomm variant spotted the Quad-Core Snapdragon 800 and the Octa-Core Exynos 5420 variant. Now coupled with 3 gigs of RAM, the device was one of the best of its time in terms of the overall performance. And the 3200mAh of battery also made it one of the few devices which lasted the whole entire day. Now on to the optics, Samsung made some significant software improvements over the Note 2 with the Galaxy Note 3 with 4K video capabilities and an upgraded 13 megapixel shooter. And this phone was amazing when it came to photography. 
Now the display was also another major hit on the device with a 5.7 inch 1080p display and the display got plenty of rave reviews back in its day. Now later in 2014, Samsung launched the Galaxy Note 4 and the Galaxy Note H. Now during this year, Samsung delivered two visually different Note models. The Note H had a tapered design on the right side of the phone, serving a unique function for its user. And as for the Note 4, this phone got a pretty update on its software end and the display bumped to a 2K resolution with again really good reviews from YouTubers around the world. But the problem with being ahead of its curve is that many apps and games could not fully utilize the better quality screen and thankfully, this isn't the case anymore. And another thing to note is that this was the last device to spot a removable battery. Now, while the hardware got a typical spec bump from generation to generation, the software got a major improvement in terms of the camera processing and the overall performance of the device. And then TouchWiz also received some really good optimization to allow for a more responsive user experience, especially with the introduction of the windowed mode, which made multitasking amazing on the device. And another cool feature of this phone is that it had an IR blaster. Now, the Galaxy Note 5 was the first device which began a new design language for Samsung's take on the Android UI and it was actually quite beautiful at this time with a less bloat and also more well thought out features. Now, on the hardware end, the display was still amazing with its 2K resolution and the build of the phone was also improved upon spotting a glass back and metal sides following the Galaxy S6 design and with the SOC, Samsung finally decided to drop the Qualcomm and fully embrace the Exynos SoC. And what was a surprise for the Galaxy Note 5 is the fact there was no longer expendable storage and a removable battery. Then given the 16 megapixel camera, photo quality was also amazing and this is where we started to get the wireless charging in the Note lineup. Now, after the success of the Galaxy Note 5, Samsung decided to align its Note lineup with its Galaxy S lineup, skipping the Note 6 moniker to introduce the Galaxy Note 7. Now, before the whole battery fiasco, this phone was given stellar reviews with high end specs meets good software optimization, and launching it together with Android 6 Marshmallow allowed the hardware to run at its peak performance. Now, the beauty of the 5.7-inch display matched the performance by the Octa-Core Exynos 8890 with 4 gigs of RAM and even the camera produced some truly remarkable shots. Almost every YouTuber who reviewed it absolutely loved it. But yes, the phone was plagued with some truly bad manufacturing defects with its batteries. Now, the batteries were overheating and combusting, resulting in a couple of phones catching fire and even exploding, and this was all ended up with Samsung recalling the device and discontinuing the Note 7. Then the Samsung Galaxy Note Fan Edition was released a year later, just a couple of months before the launch of Note 8, with a smaller battery capacity and also an updated software. Now, a couple of months after launching the Galaxy Note Fan Edition, the Galaxy Note 8 is launched. Now, I must say that Samsung took the failure of the Note 7 head-on with the Galaxy Note 8 coming back strong. Its hardware and the spec sheet definitely checks most of the boxes for most users, but it did come with a higher price tag. Now, the device was really well built and it looked amazing and the screen went right to the edges and the all-glass build just made it amazing. Then there was a new 18.5 by 9 aspect ratio of a new 6.3 inch screen which made it a lot easier to use with one hand while adding much more screen real estate. Now the camera was as usual top notch and this time Samsung added the secondary telephoto lens and the S Pen also got some decent software improvements. It could now help with translating sentences instead of individual words and some minor improvements of the screen off memo function. Now, the battery on the Galaxy Note 8, however, was decent at best as Samsung went with a safer option of going with a slightly smaller 3300mAh of battery with some power-saving software tricks included and going against the norm of 2017 devices, the Note 8 also had a headphones jack and introduced the USB-C connector to the lineup. 
Now coming into the latest lineup, we have the Galaxy Note 9. Now this was once again the best phone that Samsung made and it basically takes the Note 8 and fixes one of the only gripes that people had with the phone, yes, the battery. While we do get the usual bump in specs to the latest and greatest, the battery gets the biggest upgrade with a bump up to 4000 milliamps of battery. Now we also get the latest Android OS 8.1 Oreo at launch and upgradable to the Android 9 Pie with its new One UI skin. Now the camera quality is still amazing and matches the shooters on the flagship Galaxy S9 and then the S Pen, the Note's best unique feature also got an update to support Bluetooth Low Energy which enables features like using the S Pen as a remote shutter and also to control music on the device. So yes, this brings us to the Note 10. Now with so many renders and leaks already surfacing, it is already seemed like it's gonna be a device that surely lives up to its reputation, so let's just wait and see.